I'm going to read a uh, famous UFO incident from someone named Travis Walton. You may have heard of this. I believe it was uh, Brad who wrote in a UFO story on our last episode who uh, suggested I look into this case. I am reading this from Wikipedia. (laughs) The Travis Walton UFO incident was an alleged alien abduction of American forestry worker Travis Walton by a UFO on November 5th, 1975, while he was working in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest near Snowflake, Arizona. Walton was missing for five days and six hours. After days of searching with scent dogs and helicopters, Walton says he reappeared by the side of the road near Heber, Arizona. Or Heber, one of those. Huber? Huber. Heber, Arizona. No, H E B E R. Herber. No, there's no R. Never mind. The Walton case received mainstream publicity and remains one of the best-known alien abduction stories, while scientific skeptics consider it a hoax. In 1978, Walton wrote a book about his purported abduction titled The Walton Experience, which was adapted into the 1993 film Fire in the Sky. According to Walton and a number of other members from the logging crew, on November 5th, 1975, he was working with the timber sand improvement crew in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest while riding in a truck with six of his co-workers. They allegedly encountered a saucer-shaped object hovering over the ground approximately 110 feet away, making a high-pitched buzz. Walton claims that after he left the truck and approached the object, a beam of light suddenly appeared from the craft and knocked him unconscious. The other six men were frightened and supposedly drove away. Dang, they just ditched him? (laughs) Walton claimed that he awoke in a hospital-like room, being observed by three short, bald creatures. He claimed that he fought with them until a human wearing a helmet led Walton to another room, where he blacked out as three other humans put a clear plastic mask over his face. Walton has claimed he remembers nothing else until he found himself walking along a highway five days later with the flying saucer departing from above him. Spooky. Mm. Yeah. Something's in the water and hole. Yeah. <laughs> and we, hole just, Arizona. we just watched a video on this guy. Yeah, we did. Did you yeah. remember? Yeah, we did. Oh, well, yeah. give us some insight. Is there anything else that Wikipedia didn't have? They remember? they mentioned that some government agency, maybe like the like FBI yeah, or something, men in black. <laughs> they came to investigate the site. I don't know if it's true since it wasn't in that story, but they said they well, came out with the Geiger. Oh well, yeah, they came out with the Geiger counter thing, the radio radiation thing that picks up radiation levels. Mm-hmm. And they went through the whole area where they said he went missing, if this is the same guy. It is. And uh, they didn't have any spikes on the radiation meter. Well, the I think the guys that were working with him left their equipment there or whatever. His hard hat. The hard hat and whatnot. And uh, they checked his hard hat and it set off the, the Geiger counter. I think that's how you say it. So there was radiation on his hard hat, and oh wow! So I don't know what that means extraterrestrial wise, but it means the beam is um, radioactive. Could be yeah. they could be their spaceships could be radioactive. Yeah. Uh, ran because um, after he disappeared, all his friends went to the police to report it, but they were all freaking out, and they admit it to seeing a UFO, but of course the police aren't buying it. So they suspect him of possibly murdering him. So that's why they went out to go search for him. And then there was these like men in black FBI people. And then once they tested the hard hat and it went off, one of the guys, the suspects, went to go speak to the police about it. And the cops said that they were a part of them and that they were gone by the time he went to go tell the police. What? The so they must have heard about it and yeah. want to go find if there's any Area 51 kind of evidence that they could use. Yeah. 
Hmm. A lot of um, alien stories seem to have like government involved. Yeah. 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 Like immediately. Why are they yeah. trying to hide it so much? What's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know about y'all, but like alien abductions seem like one of the most terrifying things <laughs> that yeah. could happen to you. You just like wake up in a hospital like environment with creatures yeah. hovering over you Different poking species. and prodding i don't think it'd be kind of cool no it sounds horrifying but also what makes this abduction story i guess credible all the guys that were oh, yeah. deemed as suspects ended up taking a lie detector test and they all passed and all told the same story well four out of the five guys came back uh, Pot, like past yeah past where there wasn't anything like where that they were lying about mm-hmm. but the fifth guy i believe was inconclusive yeah. but it's still four out of five guys passed you know it's so that's kind of like where the credibility comes in it yeah because yeah. so many of them and uh, inconclusive doesn't necessarily mean it failed either so yeah yeah who just nervous yeah <laughs> 